a little background on, on Marty before our uh, fireside, and then I'll open it up to questions from the audience as well. Marty serves as the president of Box uh, Media and previously served as a COO and group publisher. Uh, Box Media has seven publications, SB Nation, The Verge, Polygon, Curbed, Eater, Racked, and Vox.com. Mo, uh, uh, Marty is the co-founder of The Verge and Polygon. Prior to Vox, he served as a senior vice president of AOL's content publishing division, where he ran the company's original news, finance, sports, and technology cont uh, content offerings, as well as weblogs. Before joining AOL in 2001, he served as a deputy chief of staff uh, to U.S. Treasury Secretary Lawrence Summers, and he's a graduate of NYU uh, Law School. With that, Marty, welcome. And, um, Let's kick it off. If you could just give us a little overview for mo most of us know some of the Vox properties, a little uh, uh, overview of uh, the entire um, universe of uh, Vox right now. Sure, terrific. Thanks, Paul. And it's, uh, it's really great to be here uh, with all of you uh, to see so many uh, great top marketing uh, industry people from around the region. Uh, so Vo Vox Media, as, as Paul said, is, uh, is one of the fastest growing digital media companies uh, today. And, uh, and our, our, our goal, our mission, is to uh, create the, a new generation of consumer media properties uh, that can combine uh, the best uh, overall content consumption experiences that bring together uh, the, some of the most powerful modern kind of digital savvy uh, audiences uh, and as well as the best advertising experiences so that we can ultimately uh, connect uh, the best brands with the audiences that they want to reach in the most powerful ways uh, possible. And we think that the digital medium is finally here uh, in, in a real way for brand marketers, uh, and we seek to be one of the leaders in helping brands reach their audiences uh, in the digital medium. Uh, we have, uh, we've been around for several years. Vox Media uh, started as the, uh, as kind of the merger of uh, a company what, uh, th then known as SB Nation uh, with uh, a team of people uh, that came together with SB Nation to form uh, The Verge. Uh, and in the process, we created Vox Media uh, as our uh, umbrella company. And since, since The Verge launched, which until then had been the fastest growing kind of independent content uh, website uh, ever produced. Uh, now that's been replaced uh, in terms of speed of growth by Vox.com, which just launched a couple of weeks ago uh, with, uh, with Ezra Klein and, and a cohort of his uh, colleagues uh, and other folks uh, along the way. Uh, we have launched uh, Polygon, a modern uh, gaming publishing website. And last November, we acquired a company uh, based in New York, called Curb Networks, which publishes in lifestyle categories, uh, uh, food and, and dining, uh, fashion and, uh, and shopping, as well as uh, home and real estate uh, under the brands Eater, Racked, and, and Curb. So now we have seven uh, consumer brands. And, uh, and, and I think we're going to take a pause at the moment to just uh, uh, focus on growing these brands. But we're up to about 70 million. Uh, unique readers a month, uh, and uh, and we feel like we've we've uh, we've achieved a great formula in terms of presenting the right reading experiences uh, for uh, for consumers, uh, and 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 now we're we're really focused on how do we bring those experiences and audiences together uh, with with the brands uh, that want to reach them, and so. Uh, we view ourselves uh, in doing that as equal parts uh, kind of journalistic and editorial company, uh, technology company, uh, which, which allows us to publish in unique ways and scale what we do, and advertising company. It's really important for us to be uh, a leading principle in each of those uh, areas. So that's, that's the formula that we think brings it together in the most powerful way in digital right now. Could, could you give us um, a, a case study uh, or an example of um, a brand that um, you've worked with that's doing something unique, different? We, we have yeah. a, a room full of marketers and advertisers, um, and you're, you're definitely 
creating sort of a new type of platform. If you look at many of your properties, they look different than news sites or, or content um, publishers from a couple of years ago. Do you have a, a, a case study of maybe a, an advertiser who did something unique or different? Sure, ab absolutely. And uh, uh, I think one, one of the things that we try to do uh, that helps us create the, the platform that, that can be most powerful for marketers is that we consider ourselves, I know, uh, in terms of what we produce by way of our consumer brands, kind of equal parts magazine publisher, newspaper publisher, and cable television uh, programmer. And so we want to create experiences that really blend uh, the best of all of those forms of programming uh, into a single coherent experience and do it in a way that uh, reflects the, the most uh, elegant des design aesthetics and, uh, and, and presentations that allow readers to consume content and the brand uh, advertising messages in ways that feel holistic and, uh, and, and part of a well-stitched together uh, experience. And, and so our, the, the, the principal products that we uh, offer to brands right now are basically three big ones. What, the first is uh, really high impact, scaled custom display advertising that, uh, that, that basically gives readers uh, and viewers real moments with brands and the stories that they're telling. Uh, very, very high impact and kind of large scale editorial sponsorships. Uh, and then the, the third is uh, true custom created content. Uh, we've, you've probably heard uh, the word native content in, uh, in many different forms over the last 12 months. Um, but what we're trying to do for native content is to do what we have done on the uh, kind of the consumer uh, side, and that is create the best, most beautiful, most high impact experiences using the most creative uh, content production, uh, video experience, and design. And so the recent campaigns that I would, I would point to, uh, we've just uh, finished one with Intel, which was a 10 part video series that uh, was created specifically for Intel. It's called The Future Is Now, and it focused on 10 different uh, innovators uh, that are starting uh, or building uh, very, very impressive uh, future-oriented companies uh, and the work and how, and how Intel uh, technology and platform is, is helping them do that uh, along the way. And we, we published this uh, on The Verge and it, it, it sat uh, alongside of all of our other, other content. Uh, for us, it's important that um, as we do this, it's clear to users uh, that, that this is uh, something produced by our own internal advertising studio called Vox Creative, um, but to be presented in a way that makes it uh, appealing and, and, and makes readers actually want to read it. And so hundreds of thousands of people have viewed this, this series uh, that uh, I'd, I'd suggest um, anyone take a look at it really is a great example of a modern brand media campaign uh, in its, in its uh, presentation, and I think the, the, the degree to which it added to brand lift uh, across our audience. Another one is for the Microsoft OneDrive, uh, which is currently live on, uh, on The Verge and, and other sites. Uh, again, it's, it's looking at stories of compelling people that, um, uh, that are doing things uh, using Microsoft products that actually change the world uh, in, in amazing and wonderful ways, uh, and, and it helps the brand connect with our audience. And, and what you see is uh, in, in comments and forums and sites uh, all over the web is, uh, is appreciation for great advertising, appreciation for uh, messages that uh, are presented in authentic, compelling ways. And what you find is that advertising in digital you know, we say it in our meetings, it doesn't need to suck. It can be great, it can be beautiful, it can be produced in the, with the same level of quality and integrity uh, and uh, creativity that anything else uh, can be produced in terms of content. And we, and we take that approach across all of what we do for brands, whether it's display advertising or sponsorships around great editorial programs or custom content that we create we think digital advertising can be the greatest 
that advertising has ever been. Uh, the moment uh, that brands uh, are starting to move into digital from television, magazine, and other forms uh, is, is upon us. Uh, and we seek to create uh, and model uh, some of the best ways that brands can reach those audiences, which truly have already migrated to digital uh, en masse. Could, could you talk a little? So Vox Creative is uh, an agency within a media. H how does that work? Do, do, um, do, do they only um, do campaigns for the Vox platform? How is it similar and different than a normal agency? Sure. I think it's, I think it's really evolving. And in fact, uh, our, our creative agency uh, uh, works alongside of and with our advertising agencies in, in, uh, in just really seamless and uh, in powerful ways to help bring uh, the best ideas to, uh, to the brands and, and to the clients. Uh, and what we see is that uh, our perspective and closeness to uh, our experiences and our audiences allow us to bring ideas that other, otherwise would be very difficult uh, to provide. And so uh, the, the combination of Vox Creative working with our agencies and clients ultimately produces the most compelling sorts of experiences that can reach across our brands. Uh, that said, uh, we, we believe that we're in the process of an evolution where uh, we'll be able to work with uh, agencies and marketers uh, to produce campaigns that, uh, that, that live uh, on our brands and, and throughout uh, a broader digital ecosystem uh, because ultimately what we're able to do is connect with and speak with uh, this audience, this digital savvy audience that is, you know, call it 18 to 45, um, and, you know, in, in terms of its uh, concentration, these are folks that either have grown up with digital or are certainly uh, savvy with it, well educated, uh, and, uh, and by and large, uh, high household income. This is kind of our focus, and we think we can help brands reach those audiences in the most compelling ways whether it's on our properties or, or more broadly speaking. You, you've said before um, that we're in a sort of second generation of um, digital advertising. Yeah. Can, can you explain that a little bit? The first uh, is, is, it was sort of a very direct sale-driven um, digital marketing where uh, ROI was, was um, based upon um, sales um, and, or, or actual clicks. It could be some sort of... Um, proxy for sales. Now, and, and I, my understanding is Vox is moving away from, as most uh, major publishers are moving away from that model um, to more of a branding model. It, first, is that kind of correct? And can you talk a little bit about the second generation um, that you're seeing? A absolutely. And, and this really is, this is a massive tectonic shift uh, going on right now. And, and you know, the factors involved uh, are uh, ubiquitous broadband connectivity, uh, much more advanced uh, experiences, be they uh, HTML, kind of web-based experiences or, or uh, applications in, in mobile, uh, as well as uh, new distribution channels that are becoming predominant uh, around social networks, which uh, tend to uh, favor uh, content that is either uh, high quality or, or just something that people feel proud uh, and, uh, and eager to share with their networks. And so uh, those things are combining uh, to, to finally kind of, I call it a maturation of the digital medium, uh, but to, to allow brands to really think of it and consider it as, uh, as the new frontier for them uh, to, uh, to make a home in. Uh, the, the, what, what, Paul, you mentioned uh, about kind of the generational shift in terms of, you know, this generation of advertising, I would call uh, generation one uh, or 1.0 of web advertising really was predominantly focused on uh, direct marketing, uh, direct response, uh, very targeted to kind of focused user activity. Uh, Google uh, was the apotheosis of that kind of advertising with uh, a very a powerful, holistic experience, but focused on if you're searching for something, we're going to provide you uh, very relevant uh, information and marketing 
that connects you to the things that you're looking for. Uh, classic direct response model. Uh, and, and I would say that the display advertising that was happening around the web and certainly what uh, we did at AOL and, and others uh, as well was, was in many ways a, a, a different form of direct response, but ultimately it was backing into direct response uh, metrics and was targeted uh, more kind of at the, at the lower end of the, the classic funnel. And uh, as audiences over the past few years have migrated kind of ahead of uh, brands uh, to, to digital, and now that you're finding the biggest audiences actually uh, in digital, uh, the, the missing piece was, uh, was publishers and other, uh, other platforms starting to provide compelling ways uh, for, for brands to reach their audiences. And now that is really starting to happen. It's certainly what we're focused on is, is kind of what I would call generation two of the web, which is really about brand. Uh, it doesn't mean the direct response is, is going away. It's a huge part of the web and always will be. But in terms of the growth and the momentum uh, in, in web advertising, it's, it's all about brand now. And, uh, and it's all about how can uh, media players in the web provide the kinds of experiences and connections and, and frankly, uh, creative uh, storytelling that can connect those brands to these audiences where they are now, which is uh, in digital. In the, the, the second generation, um, in, in terms of one of the, the advantages of the first yeah. was the, the ROI was so definitive. Um, people could readily track whether yeah. sales were made um, or some sort of um, metric that led to sales. In this new generation, the second where it's more branding, um, it's a little more, did, did, it, did it result in sales? Was there ROI? How do you respond to, to the brands that say, we, we can't really tell what the ROI is? And along with that, how do you, what are the, the metrics that you're pricing it on? Is it more impressions were based at, at, and much less on, I mean, is the click even a, a metric that you would, Price off of so first the question is yeah. how the, sort of the ROI and then and then how does that the pricing of your advertising respond to that? These are these are great questions and ones that I think are in the process of uh, of evolving, but it but it's also the reason that we think as technology company that it is so important for us to build the advertising platform uh, collect. Uh, the most relevant metrics and start to determine what really are the most appropriate uh, brand metrics for this uh, sort of sort of advertising. And you know, I think the great thing is that digital really can provide uh, a lot more data with a lot more specificity than uh, other media have been able to do so far. And for us, it's it's about harnessing that and putting it together in the right ways that. Uh, can, can be the most informative for how uh, brands are connecting uh, and, and reaching uh, and lifting audience, uh, audiences along the way. So we're, we're, we're building that now. We have a first template of, uh, of what we think are the most appropriate metrics uh, that we've been working directly with agencies and, and, uh, and brands with to create. I think on, on the one level, engagement is a huge uh, piece of the puzzle. How, how much and how uh, closely are users and readers, viewers, uh, kind of engaging with, uh, with a particular creative or story, uh, how much time is being spent, uh, and, and then getting really, really granular and specific about just who these people are, uh, what are the brand uh, proclivities, loyalties, uh, and how do, they, how do they break down demographically in terms of you know, the, the, the target uh, demographic. Uh, click is obviously, I think it's one relevant <coughs> metric of engagement, but it is no longer kind of the definitive uh, metric, we think. Uh, and, and then overall, uh, studies around brand lift uh, are gonna be a very important way of kind of following up and, and testing, you know, before the campaign, uh, how did the audience uh, 
you know, receive the brand, think of the brand in terms of, and also how many people were aware of the brand, and after a campaign, what were the effects of that. So uh, these are evolving metrics, but we think they're uh, focused on uh, reach, engagement, brand lift, uh, and, and we can provide that in a very uh, detailed way and very, very granular way uh, with our platform, uh, brand advertising platform. Um, at this conference, there's actually a, s a number of um, panels about content mar marketing. Yeah. And a fair amount of marketers may be asking, well, why don't I just, why do I go through a middleman? Why do yeah. I go to you for your audience versus building my own, making my own content? Make the argument. Um, why, why should, if someone had um, a budget, why should they deploy that budget with a Vox versus um, going their own, do, doing content, yeah. coming up with their own, hiring journalists and, and doing their own? Well, I, I, I think that there are, uh, there are a very small handful of marketers that have, I think, been uh, successful at this. Um, you know, Red Bull is, is, is one that uh, decided, you know, we're just going to, we're, we're going to do this. We're going to create content. We're going to try to build audience around it. And I, I applaud. I think that's, they've done wonderful things there. Um, you know, one thing I can say is that uh, this whole business of building audiences uh, on the web is hard as hell. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of focus. Uh, and it, it's not something one takes up as a, as a side uh, business that you can say, hey, let's just get an audience. Um, it's taken us, all, I mean, we've, we've had great success at it. We've, you know, 70 million readers world, worldwide now, but that is our day job, that is our night job, and, uh, and we think we do it a lot better than most people for whom it's also their day job and night job. Uh, so it's not to be undertaken lightly. It's something that uh, can't be done once with a flash uh, and then kind of forgotten about uh, the next day because audiences are very fickle now. They will go away. They come to you one day and they go away the next. And unless you produce consistently great experiences, you can't hold on to them. Uh, and then in terms of uh, audience uh, uh, sophistication, readers and viewers on the web are more sophisticated than they ever have been. Um, and authenticity and connection uh, is uh, more important than ever. Uh, and so it's a very, you know, it, it's, it's a hard thing to do. Um, and the other thing that we're able to, to do is once we've created that scaled audience, really understand how best to connect to them. That's, that comes out of our uh, content creation sensibilities, uh, but, we've, but we've really taken those sensibilities uh, in the service of uh, of creating brand stories and uh, compelling uh, messages to connect most closely to those. So um, bottom line is uh, we would suggest that the most effective way of reaching these audiences is, uh, is, to, is to partner to do that uh, and to work together, uh, but that creating the audiences and sustaining them is, uh, is really hard work and it just may not be the focus that makes the most sense for marketers. And I, and I guess like the uh, Intel example, content marketing does, could, could, doesn't have to be in an opposition. It can be done in unison with, uh, it, with, with the uh, publishers. So. Absolutely. And I would say that uh, the, the notion is uh, for, for marketers not to become uh, you know, necessarily content producers, but to, to, but to focus on, uh, you know, storytelling and how to create the most uh, impactful messages uh, and, and, and working with uh, media companies uh, to, to connect those messages with the right audiences. And so it's, it's, uh, it, it's a partnership like it's always been. I'll get to questions. La last th big question here and then we'll get to um, questions from the audience. Mobile. Um, you you, got, you yeah. guys have uh, launched the company um, in a time when mobile, a, lot, a lot of companies are going mobile first. Are you, do you have sort of a mobile first strategy? Um, what, what is the mobile strategy? I think we have a, uh, a reader viewer first strategy. Uh, and it so happens that about 40% of our 
viewer readership uh, is in mobile now. And so we design our experiences to, uh, to be uh, as good on a tablet as they are on a desktop as they are on a phone um, and to have uh, brand advertising experiences that are uh, most uh, appropriate uh, and, and most impactful for those particular devices. Uh, so we we design our sites uh, in in what's kind of spoken of as a responsive uh, design, so that we can build it and have uh, one experience that then adapts itself to uh, the appropriate platform. Uh, and we think that that's just even even now just at the beginning of uh, the power that it's going to be able to create as the technologies get better. But the bottom line is that uh, mobile uh, is, is a, a place that is, uh, we have to be uh, working in. It, it's only going to get uh, bigger and stronger. Uh, but if we, if we create campaigns and, uh, and, and stories that uh, work across all of those platforms at the same time as users individually kind of migrate uh, across those, we, very, very few readers are just one of those devices or the other. It's usually somebody at different times of the day doing different things, uh, consuming media uh, on different devices. Uh, you want to find the best way to connect with them uh, at all of those times and in all of those places. And so that's, that's how we think of it. Great. Um, qu questions from the audience? Um, you, you too. Right? You just want to stand up and... Uh, gr great question, and I think I, the, your, your, your point about big topics changing fast is, is, is exactly why uh, you know, Ezra's uh, kind of explanatory journalism notions are so powerful, and that is, uh, and, and I would say also the, the way we think of the editorial team. What, what we, the people that we want to hire are actually experts in these topics and they're passionate about these topics they're not necessarily just kind of a uh, a generalist who goes from subject to subject we want to be able to go both uh, you know broad and deep uh, and and part of the whole explanatory notion that we're building is that uh, we add to these sets of knowledge over time uh, and we continually update them, and that as every new news story happens, we're able to uh, contextually put uh, all of that background uh, into those stories to give readers all of what they need to understand a topic, uh, even as the news is breaking and changing. So it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. Um, but your, your example of gay marriage or the power grid is just a, is a perfect example of uh, stories that have history, uh, stories that have context, stories that have uh, a lot of things going on under the surface that we want to be in a position to inform readers about in very accessible ways, but uh, in very uh, powerful uh, ways so that if a reader comes to Vox and you read about the latest judicial decision on gay marriage, you can leave Vox.com uh, knowing exactly what's going on. And uh, I, had, I had one friend that, that wrote me, he was like, hey, this is kind of a, 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 a general news site where I can also get a mini seminar on anything that's going on that's, that's relevant. Uh, and that's cool. And that's how the that's how the editorial team is thinking about this. Right next, yep. So it, it, it's a great question and one that uh, writers and editors that uh, are talking to us about joining or frankly talking to us about uh, starting a new website, uh, you know, ask all the time. And, and our basic point of view is that uh, each of our brands uh, has a distinct and autonomous team, uh, and they are each publishing to distinct audiences. Uh, and, and we assume that there's going to be overlap in terms of uh, the, the subject matter that they cover. It's no question Vox.com uh, is going to cover technology policy, and no question that uh, The Verge is going to cover 
technology policy. They're going to do it in diff very different ways depending on uh, the audiences that they're and, and, and their kind of uh, approach to the topic. Uh, and that's fine. We, we, we want that to happen. Uh, and then the other, the other point in terms of audiences moving around uh, the different sites is uh, we, we deliberately do not have uh, what you would call a portal model, where we're trying to uh, kind of jam all of these different content topics and subjects into one place. Uh, we think that audiences, uh, certainly the audiences that we're focused on, um, have subject matter interests. They want to and they know how to get to those and, and they become brand loyalists. Um, where content is relevant and editors decide it's something they want to put on their site, uh, they very frequently post to the content of one of our other brands. Uh, but we leave that totally in, in the judgment uh, of the individual editorial teams because ultimately we want the brands to reflect uh, something very distinct uh, and for the audiences to uh, come to The Verge or go to SB Nation because they're getting this experience that they like and want to return to and we're not force feeding uh, content that may not be as relevant to them. We just have time for one, one more question. Yep. It's, uh, so we, we'll have a seminar on that. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it, it's, it's not that. I think it's, uh, it, it, listen, I, I read newspapers uh, on the train going up to New York all the time. I grew up with it. I love it. Um, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's got, you know, its own uh, particular quality and value uh, that uh, is different. Uh, I think I think demographically, um, it is uh, print as a medium that a, you know a generation grew up with, um, and that generation is uh, you know getting older uh, with with time, and and that's that's not a value judgment. That's just you know fact, um, and that people who are uh, going to high school and college and you know have graduated from college, they have grown up consuming media uh, in digital formats. And so uh, over time, the print audience is, it has declined, it will continue to, to decline. I think print publishers uh, obviously realize that because uh, they're getting more and more focused on digital. Um, but, uh, but, but as a business, the, the key there is how do you uh, and, and we did. We dealt with this at AOL with dialogue. It's like, how do you, for the there's a group of people that want to kind of uh, be part of that, you know, model. And as that group shrinks, how do you continue uh, to make that a profitable business and uh, and adjust your expense base accordingly, and at the same time try to point your investment and focus into the growth areas. Uh, of, and, and in this case, it's digital. It's a tight, it's a tight wire act to be able to do. Um, but print will be around for a while, uh, and it's just uh, it's just a question of audience size and demographics. Great, great. With that, unfortunately, we have lunch coming up, so I've got to cut it uh, cut Absolutely. it off. But Marty, thank you so much. Well, Appreciate it. Thanks so thanks. much. Great, that was awesome. Great job.